All right, in this episode of Throttle Stop Garage, we're going to have a look at carbon fiber infusion. Okay, so I'm still working on the molds for the fenders and I need a little bit of a break. <laughs> they're driving me crazy. I have to get some external bracing on them and they're still a long way from being done, folks. So just to um, just to sort of keep the ball rolling on this, I'm gonna switch it up and I need to get some more learning done before I finish the fenders because I know I'm gonna discover things doing the infusion process. My molds are already made and I don't wanna run into problems. So I'm gonna start with these uh, inner fender closing panel parts, right? And we're going to uh, do the infusion on them. So the first step is to go to the hardware store and buy all kinds of stuff. Now, there's other videos. <laughs> I don't want to list everything here. There's lots of stuff. I'm going to go over it in detail though. So we've got over here, we've got uh, ball valves, various plastic tees. I got some spiral wrap. Couldn't quite get the right size, but I have the right size coming for the larger molds. This is just, these are small molds, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, quarter inch vinyl tube, um, again some ABS cement, other tees. Then we've got the uh, ubiquitous Canadian beer cup. I have no idea if that's an international thing or not, but I'll show you what those are used for other than drinking beer. Then there is the following things, uh, mold cleaner. So again, Rexco, these are the people you buy the stuff from. Uh, actually, I got all this at Composite Envisions, so I'll, I'll throw a link in the description for those guys. Anyways, and then uh, Loctite 700 NC is a, uh, a chemical mold release agent, so no wax on this stuff. We're going to use this chemical mold release agent. Uh, then I've got, I didn't have, um, didn't have the right flow media, so this is a product that you can get at the dollar store that's used for putting in your gutter so leaves don't go in them. Uh, a nice pair of scissors. Uh, I own those, so they're not my wife's. Uh, then I had bought, a long time ago, the West Systems vacuum bagging techniques. And lucky me, I found a good gassed vacuum pump uh, at a garage sale. So that I picked up for a song. And the hardest part was finding the right compressor oil for it. So anyway, with that, we've got to add to this, we've got bagging film, which is the green stuff, peel ply, which is the white stuff, a couple of rolls of various kinds of carbon fiber, because I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm just trying it out. These are my test parts. Then I'm going to make a catch pot out of the following contraption. Okay, so those cups are going to go, I'm going to just take a little bit of this 4-inch ABS, this is 4-inch ABS uh, tube with a cap on one end and a female up on the other end and then that top piece right there. Do do that one. Anyway, it's um it's a it's a I don't know, it's like a clean out uh cap part. So it's got so it's uh, not only threaded but it has an o-ring seal in it. So once that's all together and I've got that glued up, that's going to be my catch pot. So that's going to go between the vacuum source the, and the mold. All right, so we'll we'll set all this up and we'll do it in stop motion and we'll see you all later, hopefully with, um, well, we'll take a stop halfway through and show you some other stuff. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is make a catch pot. So I just thought four inch ABS plus one of those beer cups is just gonna be the ticket. So, uh, oh, and by the way, the glue that I'm using for this, obviously 3M Super 77, but um, right, so just drill and tap some quarter inch NPT holes in the top, put a ball valve and, uh, and a quick disconnect fitting, and, uh, and then just put a, 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 a hose barb on the other side, and that makes uh, quick work of that. Uh, anyway, so then I started to make the pattern, so I'm, uh, because everything's really, really tight in these molds, I didn't give enough flange, I'm uh, just making a paper pattern here, um, just to make sure that the material that I cut isn't going to be wasted, and I don't really have room to cut and do anything in the mold. Alright, so now we're uh, getting the mold clean, so this is just that cleaner, and then the, uh, the chemical release agent goes on. I no clue what I'm doing here, but I just... You know, you follow the label instructions, wipe it on. Uh, I what four different directions and uh, four coats and okay. So then I had some old tacky tape, 
<clears throat> top tip don't use old tacky tape uh, and this stuff's gray it doesn't it's not nearly as tacky as the as the yellow stuff anyway the the fire the carbon fiber fabric that I ordered uh, came in an irregular shape <laughs> no idea why uh, and what really did help was uh, just giving it a little mist of that glue just uh, super 77 just mist it on uh, ahead of time and it sort of holds its shape a little better and then you just a uh, little squirt of glue inside the mold and then you just fold it in right where it needs to go now be careful with this material because it does uh, have a bias which means it stretches more in one direction than the other and I did get burned by that on one of the other pieces as I was trying to economize on uh, on the fabric for, for no reason I have lots so um, anyway and you'll see it, it stretches out terribly I think it's the next layer I, I cut it in the other direction which was the mistake right so I cut this one in the other direction and then I go to put it in and of course glue it up use the same technique and it ends up miles too long like, what's going on well it's just stretching on me right so then I kind of fold it and fiddle around with it a little bit get it all back in shape it, it ended up fine but um, anyways last coat going on so I put four different layers this is only 3000 K uh, 2 by 2 twill so it's not terribly fancy anyways the tapes on so now comes the peel ply uh, I cut that just a little bigger than the fabric and put it in and then on goes the cheapo mesh um, fortunately my other mesh did come in this <laughs> you'll find out why in a minute uh, so then a T gets inserted into the spiral and the spiral gets put in place the bagging material adding some pleats just you know the same old thing we've seen a hundred times before just never done um, another tip put the tacky tape to the inside to seal those things because I, I couldn't get this bag to pull a vacuum for love nor money <laughs> so I tried and tried I mean I cut out all, honestly I probably cut out an hour worth of footage trying to get this to work it never did work all right here's where I gave up and just decided to, to toss in the towel on this one it just wasn't gonna work so <laughs> Uh, I went off, uh, watched a little bit more video, and, and just saw if I could figure this out a little bit better. Uh, I then kind of figured out one of the problems I was having was in these corners. So even with all the materials still on, I just tossed a little bit of that uh, uh, ever glass into there, that short strand filler, and then uh, buffed those areas out, and then really attended to areas that could have air leaks again. More sanding, more learning. Uh, right, so then I clean that all off and then get ready to go again, right? So now using the proper material. And I've gotten rid of that gray tacky tape and I'm now using the sort of more standard yellow stuff that you see everyone use because I have, I have rolls of it. So uh, I thought I would use that tape. And boy, that stuff's sticky, holy cow. So uh, anyways, everything goes back in pretty much the same way, except I've changed a few techniques around uh, on this one. Um, added my, the, the part that I just put on there is actually just a plastic cap from a hydraulic fitting. <laughs> it's flat on the top and I can insert straight into it and I can put tacky tape around the top of it. Uh, which I didn't do on the first mold, I did do on the second mold, so I'm not showing you what I learned, but uh, here's what I learned. Anyways, you fold the new bag back in, this bag of material is cheap, so if you make a mistake, just uh, keep on going. Anyway, so I get it all folded and tucked in again here, uh, hoping that this is going to work. I mean, boy, I've had nothing but frustration <laughs> with this project so far, but hey, learning's like that, right? You're, you're just, I mean, I was happy the whole time because it's uh, really challenging to get this right. And the first time I inserted everything in here and it pulled a vacuum, uh, I was uh, pretty pleased with myself. There are a couple air leaks around the edges, but uh, you know, that's to be expected with this kind of stuff. And uh, there it is. So there, got a vacuum pulled. Nice. Okay, that looks like it's going to be a winner. Anyway, so on we go with beginning to uh, just search for leaks. Just push around the edges, make sure it's all pushed in nice and tight. Uh, and then listen for it. This wouldn't hold a vacuum for, for more than, would start releasing almost right away, but you know, I just left the pump running while this stuff hardened, it's a small part. And I figured there's no other way to get this to work. Watch how fast it infuses. So just zip and it's done. The biggest problem was getting it off into the far corners. 
right so you can see how how long that spiral wrap is and it should have been considerably longer so the longer the spiral wrap is the easier it is to get the uh, resin to get all the way into the corners I learned that on the second mold not not going to show you that part it just it worked great so no worries there so sat around and watched it for a little while and then away we go moment of truth it's the next day and we get to remove because the lines are all eh, hardened all right we get to remove all the materials and unbag the parts use these lines You create a fair bit of waste making this stuff. <laughs> well, it's stuck. Give it a good tug, but ah, come on. That was not nothing. Okay, so this is that peel ply ripping off. Most of the breathing material, peel flies and other things off. Again, I did see it kind of pop as I was going, so we're gonna just start easing that part out of there. There, turn it. See if I can get a little bit in here somewhere. Still in tight. And get it wetted out. I got it all wetted out right to where I needed it, but no further. A bit nerve-wracking. I've never used a chemical release agent before. And this is the first time I've ever worked with carbon fiber. So. Can't claim any expertise. But boy, I'll take that. Woohoo! And it weighs nothing, like nothing at all. It's so amazing to me. It's got work like that weighs like literally nothing it's like steel I might actually put another layer on the other part when it's all done gotta say though happy with it it's so light unbelievable I'm just gonna weigh it 154 grams on that part there's a hundred grams of cloth in it so only 50 odd grams of resin of the hundreds of grams of resin I poured into it that's all that remain the rest of it will be in this pot but again completely happy with that result as usual folks you're in the place that I want to be how else could I do this? Uh, whoa! Can you see? I can't see if I can see that. Let me have a look. Okay, so there's a giant foamy mess in my catch pot. 
it completely melted that cup. Uh, I guess I got to change my cup material because it's not epoxy safe. It melted it. Okay, here we are, and everything, like I said, everything turned out great. Both molds worked fine. Um, they were super difficult to work with. The problem was the flanges. I didn't give myself enough flange. Luckily enough, on the, uh, the fenders, the trunk, and the hood mold, I have lots of flange, so I have places to work. Uh, you just need, you need areas to get gaps between materials. You need areas to get bagging uh, tape material in there. Um, but other than that, I was super happy. These turned out pretty much as good as I could have expected for first goes. Um, again, we're not after the fancy carbon fiber look on most of this stuff. It's all going to be painted. So I'm not too concerned uh, about the specific lay of the materials. Uh, but boy, are these ever stiff and strong. Just uh, I'm kind of blown away by it. So I'm still marveling at it. Uh, and there's going to be a couple other techniques that I'm going to try and experiment with on the other parts. Uh, I wish I knew more and uh, could kind of economize a little bit. But again, we're going to learn on the fly. That's just the way we're going to roll with these parts. All right, thank you very much for uh, for coming and stopping by and joining me on the project. I really do appreciate all the views and the likes and the comments, and it's all been super helpful, right? So uh, if you are a composite professional and you would like to give me advice, that's what the comment section is for. Please, I'm all ears. None of this is done. We're working almost in real time. Uh, so like, I'm going to be laying up carbon into these molds pretty quickly, and if there's something I should know now, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> Please. Uh, anyways, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, all right, let's um, let's wrap it up, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Keep on holidays now. Did I get a holiday? I got a holiday. Lord knows I need a holiday. Okay.